All right, this is our last individual. Everybody settle down, find a seat. I, I want all parents to move their seats up here. The minute I say Gucci, I want to hear Gucci after I say it. You are an iconic legacy. You are being led by me. This is war. War! So therefore, you're not only defending your honor, you're defending the 35 years plus that I put in blood, sweat, and tears, raising people, making moments, making history, championing people in and out of my house. You're defending my legacy, because tomorrow we are at war. Back in the early 90s, you know, in New York City was a hotbed of debauchery. You know, this was Sodom and Gomorrah and a 15-year-old ingenue, slim waist, you know, walking around Times Square, there were so many pitfalls that I could have went through. New York City is the Jerusalem of ballroom and I found this community and it saved my life as it saved a lot of people's lives before me and after me. Ballrooms are gall rooms where bold risks get taken to flaunt your look, to win your category, to score that 10, to crown that win. A central value within ballroom is nerve. Creative competitions grounded in magic realism or magic realness, depending on what the category is. Ballroom categories represent everything your ascribed sex and prescribed society dictates that you should not be in real life. Judging is point-based from a category criteria set where the highest scores win. But if you drop your duster on the floor, expect to be disqualified. Most importantly, ballrooms claim freedom from harm for black and brown LGBTQIA people. Ballroom was birthed from racism in urban communities, prison, and drag circles. Ballroom contorts fashion rules and traditions to uplift its own escape. Ballroom is the best IG. Exaggerated, female, majestic, butch, flirty, a lived inspiration. No wonder Beyonce took notes. Oh, it's cute. That's like super casual. Ballroom's timeless. There's people in ballroom that's been walking for 17, 20 years. And you've seen those people grow. You know, I remember starting ballroom when I was 23 years old. People see me as a baby girl going to a grown woman. If you stay on your shit and you stay relevant and you let them know that I'm here to stay and I'm not going nowhere and you keep evolving, what can they do with you? How more times can you be? When I first started ballroom, I was shy. I had the personality, but it wasn't fully realized yet because I was also in my transition. So I was not only transitioning with my, in my body, but I'm also transitioning in the ballroom scene where things keep evolving throughout the years. When I was 18, ballroom happened for me because of just genuine connection. I was there to support my friends and the people that I loved, and they were my chosen family. In this 1980s ballroom period of affectional communities, chosen family coming together, this period reshaped perceptions around the 1950s and 1960s nuclear family concept, right? And what constitutes heteronormative identities. In ballroom, family bonds are shaped by distinctive groups called houses. These houses represent a 21st century understanding of family that could be defined as a mutually respectful hierarchical bond. 
I am Marla Mizrahi, the legendary founder of the Gorgeous House of Gucci. I am the iconic Jack Mizrahi Gorgeous Gucci at your service. My name is Mackenzie. I'm part of the House of Gorgeous Gucci. I'm a child of Jack. I'm the legendary overall father of the House of Gorgeous Gucci, and I'm the king of sex. This is an old school bloodline. This is a thorough, real royal bloodline that is connected to the past the ballroom, that's connected to the pioneers of ballroom, connected to the individuals who had the nerve and the audacity to want to be bigger than what society told them they were. So I like to remind my house that, listen, you're not just a new house of four years, you're plugged into like old vire, vampire blood. Like I am the stat of my house. You have people that walk, different categories. Of course, I am iconic for fashion. You have rivals that are built within the fashion community, within the culture of ballroom. And you have people on a hierarchy status based on their reputation and things they've worn and moments that they have made over their career. I feel like Cinderella. Oh. <laughs> it's Gorgina. Absolutely. <laughs> Gorgina. The queen is talking. <laughs> I have been in the ballroom since for over 17 years, and you know, I think it was time for me to become an overall mother of a house. And I have been waiting for that title for a very long time because I've worked so hard for it. <laughs> you see me? You know, the image of an overall mother is very grand. It's the jewel of the house. I love just being around my kids because they support each other. I love you, sister. Hi, beautiful. Any advice that I can give them within the ballroom or outside of ballroom is what my job is to do, you know? I'm a member of Gorgeous House of Gucci, though I don't walk. I kind of get involved more in what I would call personally a service. So how do I give back to younger uh, black and brown queer youth? And ballroom is a way to do that. And what I get in return is a sense of chosen family and connection. Ballroom is uncut, unfiltered, pure creativity against the odds. That's fucking amazing. I tried my dress on too, but you guys were not here, but it's, it girl, they said it fits you perfect. They said it was just like, boom. It was, it's definitely a moment. Back in the day, baby, you didn't hear about this. No, man, you kept that quiet. You know, now it's just so open, I love it. The culture is appreciated more now because of television and social media, and we are now having people in the forefront to speak about it and throw it in your face. Once it's in your face, you gotta catch it, right? We don't go out to empower media. We're going to live our own lives. Media will attract to us because what's happening right now, as you can see, a lot of our clips go viral. Whether it's somebody that's jumping off a balcony voguing, whether it's a celebrity coming into a ball and being on the runway and walking for the first time. Those who are savvy enough to see what they're plugged into give a better spotlight to our community. Ballroom's cultural volcano explodes when mainstream pop culture deifies Madonna, Gaga, Janet, and Beyonce as distinct forces of nature. They are, but they had help. Their collective pop-positive gender notions of sisterhood, empathy, and sheroism are authentic principles within Ballroom's affectional communities. Due to pop culture blindfolds, white ignorance, and a general lack of genuine knowledge of black and brown queer history, ballroom must be orally documented by its authentic voices. You know, a lot of people come and spectate ballroom and they take their inspiration from that. And they go back and then do back to their regular job and then they project that to their clients or fashion companies and they run with it. And it's just like, to us, it's kind of like, we feel a little jaded in, in a sense because, you know, we're not recognized for what we do. Majority of the houses are named after fashion houses. So you would think the house wears all Gucci or they wear all Balmain or, you know, any Prada or, you know what I mean? Like, 
and they don't. Like, they just kind of like get these names and use them. Nowadays, people are starting to try to reach out to the designers and, you know, get that recognition from the real designers like Ricardo Tishi and Marc Jacobs and, you know, things like that. For me, it beggars belief that people say no to loaning gowns to balls. There's this whole army of middle management in fashion that protects the status quo, who aren't making the clothes. They're not coming up with the joy around it. Why are they the gatekeepers? As with so many things, music, fashion, art, that bit in the middle says you're not welcome here. These are these major cultural moments where the front line of creativity is coming together. Like what, what else is fashion? So if you're not gonna open your doors, I'm gonna call you out, you know, and I'm gonna say, well, why aren't you willing to do this, right? Do you really think that, you know, this culture is not wholesome, right? What is your real issue with trans women, right? Is it just that they belong behind the decks at your after party? Like, what the fuck? What we have is the same systems that have been in place for years running these fashion houses. Stop making these programs that saying you're inclusive. Stop making these faux pas against culture and then having to come say your story and then lose billions and billions of dollars later. We are right here. This is a source that has been empowering the world for a, for a while. Ballroom codes were founded on a safe space for marginalized people. It's really no surprise how these respective forces collide like a dysfunctional family reunion. As fashion interests globalize, a constant concern is immediate erasure of ballroom's influence on a pseudo-sophisticated majority. Notable fashion moments are duty-bound to tell the story of their influences, or like, when it pertains to the souls of black and brown queer people, they fucking should. As big media and big fashion intersect now more than ever, what is the compromise between culture and capitalism? <laughs> If we have the audacity to be authentically us with nothing, with nothing, and we still can walk in any room with our heads held high as if we are wearing and dripping a million dollars, what happens when you power up with name brands? When you power up with fashion houses who want to give us an opportunity and want to see culture go even further. I think they are the last piece of resistance to opening themselves and their arms to who we are as ballroom. I just wanted to say, you guys, I'm happy that we're all here together. And tomorrow when we walk, I want us to all just, you know, cheer for your brother, your sister, your cousin, your uncle, your aunt, whichever it is. We want to hear it in your voice in the way that you guys cheer, in the way you cheer us on. I may lose my breath, my voice, whichever. And I want all of us to cheer for each other and let's just keep the legacy alive. It's been a long, tumultuous year for us. So people want to see us, you know, slack. People want to see us be violent. People want to see that's not us. So what I will say is if you see a sister, brother, cousin, uncle, the bitch that you fought a couple of weeks ago, whichever, <laughs> cheer Gucci, they cheer for her. As in any other sport, ballroom is a sport, you have to carve your way to the top to stay there and position yourself politically. It's very important that you understand who you are before you compete in fashion because you are putting your expertise to be judged. It's fashion, darling. You want to know why? Because I said it. When I walk this weekend, when I hit that stage, I just feel like I don't see nobody. I find a focal point at the very end of the stage. I look over all the judges, I look, I block out all the crowd, and I look at that focal point. That focal point is a trophy. I hate having attention on me. Very fucking anxious. So I used it as a form of therapy to do the worst thing that I could imagine, which was have everybody look at me. From that, I was able to sharpen myself into the, the better version of myself that I was meant to be. You literally have to exceed your own expectations 
every time you walk. That support that you get from being recognized for the hard work that you've put in is what not only is inspiring to go outside and do more for yourself, but it's, it's an amazing feeling to have. Real Katoa. Katoa, Katoa, Katoa. For the first time in my ballroom history career, and I've been in the scene for 25 years, nothing to this magnitude in fashion has been done. This is going to be a team of us that represents the house of gorgeous Gucci in fashion and ballroom, and everyone's going to be in couture. That's unheard of. You can't underestimate anyone in a competition because talent will always outshine anything. True talent will go noticed. True fashion speaks for itself. This is going to be a fact, and you can quote me, and I don't care if it takes five years or 10 years, but there's going to be a time where you're going to come to us and you're going to ask us to wear your labels. You're going to throw them at our feet. And I'm going to say, get somebody else to do it.